all right what's up guys welcome to this another tutorial video and in this video we're going to talk about react context api and we're going to talk about uh what is context api how and where and when we can use that okay we're not going to dive deeper into uh advanced stuffs or and create multiple contexts or do stuff like that uh we're, we're just going to learn the basics of how we can get started in a very simple way and we'll actually see uh, why and when it is really important okay so without further ado let's get started all right guys so this is actually how our file structure looks like and so basically what i did was just created a folder called context and i actually opened that folder in vs code i uh, went to terminal and just typed npx create react app and dot and that actually created the basic react boilerplate for me and right now it looks like this all right so nothing complicated going on here if you don't know what is going on i do suggest you to uh, watch my other react crash course and that will really help you get along the way but anyways let's go and do some cleanup so let me go here i don't want to have on i go here delete that don't need logo as well don't need this all right, so let me go to source here. Uh, I'm gonna keep app.css, app.js here. I'm not gonna keep this. Let's remove that. Index.css, I don't want that. Um, this right here, I don't want that either. Let's delete that. And on app.js, let me remove this logo here. All right. And let me also remove this entire thing and here let me just write each one say hello world save that let's go to index.js and index.css I don't want that All right, so that's it about the cleanup. Um, let me just clean this up as well. So let's go to app.js right here. All right, so now what I want is actually, instead of this hello world, I do, I, I do want a nav bar here, okay? And inside the nav bar, I also want to create a component which actually uh, displays a certain data, okay? And I also want to create another component down here. All right so let's just create that let me clear this up and say div, div. and inside that let me just create components so first component I would want is a nav bar all right, and the next component I would want is, let's say, showcase. All right. All right, so let's also import those here. So import nav bar from, let's say, uh, dot slash components slash nav bar. I haven't created these but I'll create that later on and also I want to import showcase right, from not slash components and showcase all right okay so nothing much just imported navbar and showcase here and just we add it down here right so let me create this components and let me go to source here say oops sorry not new file let's go to source here and say new folder let me create a folder called components and inside that components I want to create basically two files the first one let me just create that so navbar dot js and let me quickly write down the react code okay and and this stuff is pretty simple so you should be actually able to understand the stuffs okay so all right so nothing fancy just created a functional component 
and just add a little bit of JSX and oops sorry let me just remove this and say nav bar all right that's that and since I also want to add CSS because I want I do want to style some of the elements here so let me just import app.css import dot dot slash since we are inside a folder so let's go back and do app.css all right all right so let me also create another one for showcase all right so let's go here create new file and show case all right so this is it for the showcase component just created a class based component here which actually uses a render method and it returns the required JSX which is this so let me go here and just save that and let's see and here it says fail to compile showcase.js does not match the corresponding name so let's make it capital because the showcase.js I think I did the camel case here right that's why it was showing the error and let's see so yeah we have this react context api which is actually coming from this navbar.js and we also have the username is which is coming from this component that is showcase all right now let me also add a little bit of css now since this is not a css tutorial and i don't want to deviate from our main task which is actually learning context api so i'm just going to quickly add css here so let's go here all right so and if you want to use the same CSS as I have did in this video, and if you want to follow along, then I actually have a link below in my description, which will actually take you to my GitHub page, and you can actually download all these files from there, and you can actually, you know, copy the CSS and just paste it here, all right? So let's just save this one and see. All right. Uh, not the best design, but still it works. So, and the next thing is that I also want to create a component here all right which again I basically said is actually displays a user now user is actually gonna be our state we actually haven't created that but we're gonna create that later on but actually here I want to have a component inside this navbar component and which actually displays the user all right so let's go to navbar.js here and here let me just go here and say something like user all right and let me import that as well here so import user from dot slash components slash uh, user dot js all right and in components here let me create new file and say user dot js and let me quickly create the component here so right so that's our component just displaying this user here and let's see uh, let's save this as well it says fail to compile never just can't resolve user.js and oh sorry I actually did this I'm actually inside the component so I don't have to do this right here save that and again saying can't resolve user.js all right it's just a slash all right, so there we go. We actually have, we actually created a component, and this all uh, styling. It's actually, uh, I'm using a class name called user, and inside app.css, I've actually styled that, and that's where it's coming from. Okay, but more importantly, uh, we actually have created this user component, and it is actually inside this navbar component. All right, so right now our component tree is looking like this. This is our entire app component. Okay, and this app component has two sub -com two child components, this navbar component right here, and this showcase component here. All right, and this navbar component has a child element called user. So now let me create the state in app.js. Okay, and I actually want this to be a class based component. So, all right, so let's create the state. So state equals this and here let me just say name and set that to John Doe all right 
Yep, so that's the state and we have actually created that state in our app component. And we are using that state on this user component, okay, which is actually like the grandchild of this app component. All right, and we're also using this user data or this name data here in our showcase component as well, which is the child of this app component, right? So normally in this cases, what you would actually do is something called prop drilling or something like that, okay? Which is you just uh, you just send this state data as a prop in each component, all right? So what you would have done is say name equals and you'd have done this dot state dot name, right? Something like that. And then you'd have to go to navbar.js again and here as well, you'd have to say something like this. So again, name equals to, so props.name because that would come from here, so props, right? Something like that. And then uh, you would go to user and you'd actually use that here. And that's actually fine if you're uh, just a little bit uh, one or you're actually going to two or three levels down. But think uh, think of it something like this. If you, had, if you had to go below more than eight components, right? And in those cases, we are actually passing this data to components which actually doesn't require these values, all right? Because right now here only this user component right here needs that value. This navbar does, does not require it, but still we're passing those values from here okay so or if there is a data which is actually required by several components then in those cases you can actually use what is called context api all right so let me clear this up okay let me clear this as well uh, that's that and let me see here I don't want this that I don't want this as well all right so in order to use context api what you have to do is actually first create a context okay and that context is basically an object which gives us something called a provider and a consumer all right and what provider and consumers are is that a provider will pass a data which in this case is this all right and once the provider passes this data all the components that is present out here can be able to access those data Okay, and the way these components access the data is with the help of a consumer. All right, so first let's create a context. So let's go here and right click and create a new folder and say on text. All right, and here let me just create a new file and say something like user context. Okay, now because since we are handling this data, okay. That's why we are using user context. And later on, we'll talk about having multiple contexts, okay, where we are actually managing more than one state or more than one data. And for each data, we're actually having a different context, all right? But that's about later on. First, let's just create a user context. And here, we have to use the API and create a context, okay? So it's very simple. So let's just do import react from react. And here, let's just say const user context equals to, and now we're actually using the context API, which is react dot create context. All right. And what this actually does is it actually returns an object which contains the provider and the consumer components. All right. And we also need to export this user context. So export default user context, all right? And that's it, that's basically done. And now in other components, you can actually use what is something like this. So user, com, user context dot provider, gives, actually gives you the provider and user context dot consumer this gives you the consumer, right? And these you actually use in the form of components. So let me go to app.js here. Now first, we actually need to use a provider, all right? Now what provider does is actually passes the data, all right? 
and once we actually create a provider here then all the components and all the child components and all the grand 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 child components can actually act be able to access those data all right without you know doing some pop prop drilling or something like that so let me show you how to do that let me first we need to import this file right here okay so uh, we actually exported this user context right and we actually need to import that so user context from and it's actually inside the context folder so let's go dot slash context slash user context dot js right and that will do the trick now we actually have access to user context now in order to use provider what we have to do is actually wrap this entire thing inside user context dot provider okay so let's do that so let's do user context dot provider and here let me end that with user context and this user context provider actually takes a value right and and that value is actually an object and inside that object we actually have to refer the data that we want to pass all right so which in case is this so let me just write state to this dot state all right so we are actually passing this entire state okay as this value state here all right and now everything that is wrapped up inside this co provider component can actually access this state data all right so the components that we have inside it are this nav bar showcase and also this user component and also this user component okay and since user component is actually the component which is present inside navbar component this can also be able to access this data all right so let's do that let's access the data so first let me go to user.js and again we actually need to import user context from and i think this is actually and let me just open this up we are actually in user.js yep we do have to go one step back so dot dot slash say context and let's go to user context context dot js all right and the reason why we're using user context here in user.js is because in order to get the data we actually need a consumer okay and that is actually present in user context okay and that's why we are actually importing this all right so let me close this up all right so let's create our consumer component here so what we're going to do is inside this return we're actually going to create user context dot consumer right and wrap this div up with user context of consumer and this consumer actually expects a function all right and this function takes props as an argument all right and inside this function it actually returns this jsx so let's copy that and all right so this is actually the structure of our consumer so it actually expects a function to run and that function actually takes props as an argument and returns this jsx all right now you might be wondering what does prop include okay so basically props actually include whatever you have passed here all right so in your provider whatever you passed as a value it is being actually accessed as a prop in the consumer all right so now you can actually do something like this so let's go here and instead of user instead of hard coding it let's just say props dot state dot name right and let's just save that and there you go you have the john doe okay 
So, and the reason why I used props.state here is because I actually used a property called state here, all right? Instead of this state, if I had used uh, something like user, right? And I could actually go here and say, instead of the state, props.user, and that would give me the same thing, which is John Doe, okay? Because that's John Doe here. And so yeah, this is actually it. This is actually the basic use of context API, okay? Without the involvement of this component, which is navbar, we're actually getting the value of app.js state in our user JS, all right? And consider if this were to be used by a lot of components and each component has had a lot of levels, then, you know, the passing down as a prop would, would have been really, really, really difficult and would have been really, really, really uh, overwhelming. Uh, it would be very difficult to read your code as well. So that's why uh, in those cases, context API are a really big help, all right? And let's also get the, the data here, okay? So we actually have this showcase, right? And again, in order to get the data, we actually have to use consumer. So we're gonna import user context from from dot dot slash and say context slash user context dot js, right? That's that, and on here we can actually do this. So, user user context dot consumer, and wrap this up here. User context dot consumer, and again it expects a function to run, and that function actually takes props as an argument which is actually the data you have passed. And here it actually returns the JSX, all right? So our JSX is here, all right. And returns, oops, sorry about that. I just wrote return. And, oh yeah, <laughs> I did everything, but I actually forgot to add the value. So my bad, props.user dot name i guess that's it right yeah so we actually got our value here and here as well in these two components from our parent app component with the help of context api and this is basically how context api works you know so in short you first create what is called a context okay because this context this context is actually an object which will let you use a provider and a consumer. And provider and a consumer are the two most, I think, two most important things when it comes to React Context API. And the next thing is that you have to wrap everything, all the components, okay, inside a provider. So what provider does is actually provides the value that you want to use in most of the components, all right? And actually you can get that value in other components with the help of consumer, all right? And the basic function of consumer is that consumer actually expects a function to run. That function actually takes an argument called props and this props actually contains the data that you have passed in the provider, all right? And that's the basic uh, you know, concept of this con context API. And it's actually used when there is a lot of components in your component tree. And if passing down as a prop is really overwhelming, then you can actually use context API. All right, in those cases. Okay, so this is actually fine, all right? So everything is fine, everything is running here, okay? But what if you want to use this data here, okay? Somewhere other than this vendor method. For example, let's say uh, right here, if you have a lifecycle event, right? So, so let's create a lifecycle event called uh, component did mount all right and let's open that up okay so component did mount uh, this 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 method this is the lifecycle method of react and this method actually runs when the elements are actually mounted in the dom all right so let's do something like console dot log log and say 
mounted right so this actually runs when the browser gets refreshed and actually all the elements here are actually mounted to the dom right so let me save that and let's see let's go here so now as this page was refreshed all the mounting was done and if you can go to inspect here you can actually go to console and it's saying mounted right and this error you know you don't have to pay much attention to because you can actually also get rid of that you can go to so where's that go to public here and go to manifest.json this icons you can actually remove that right Let's save it and there you go the error is gone and the mounted is still being displayed okay so what if you actually want to use the values that you have sent in this provider in your lifecycle in your lifecycle methods all right so in those cases you can't actually use user context.consumer there all right so what you, but what you can use is something like this so what you can do is say static context type equals and you can say user context and here you can actually some, do something like this so let user equals to now after you have used this statement in order to get the data you can do something like this uh, this dot context and if you console log this so user and let's save that and let's see and there you go you can actually get the data all right so this is how you can actually get the data in lifecycle methods all right you can't use this user context or consumer here and you can actually use this method here as well okay so instead of this user context that consumer we can remove that let me just show you so here as well you can do the same thing so let user equals to this dot context and you can actually use this user variable right here so you can say something like this um, user dot name and if you save that it'll actually give you the same thing and it's not giving so let's see what's happening so we have users then user dot name all right so, so what you can do is actually say user dot user dot name and the reason why I'm doing the reason why I'm typing user twice is because user right here is this dot context, which is this object right here. And inside that objects, we also have a user property. All right. And that's why I'm using user two times in order to remove the confusion. Let me just do something like user one. All right. Uh, let's do here. Uh, let's go and say user one. And that would give me the, the value. All right. So instead of using consumer, you can also use uh, context type and you can use, you can actually get the values like this. All right. But let me just warn you that you can't use context type in functional components. Okay. This, on, this only works in when you're working with class based components. So that's one thing to remember. But yeah, this will actually let you use or actually get the data from the state right here in your lifecycle events. All right, so that's one good thing about it. But but right now here, I don't want to use this context type. So let me just go to the normal code here. All right, let's save that. There we go. Um, and the next thing that I want to show you is how you can change the data here okay by actually creating an event here all right so we're actually going to create a button and we're actually going to create an event there 
and that act that event will actually change the data in our app.js all right so let's do that let's go here let's type button and let's say on click equals to right now let me just keep it empty and say yeah, pt sorry and let's just add a class name as well so class name equals to let's do btn for class name and button and here let me just uh, write change name right so uh, when this button will actually be clicked this on click function will run all right so on click event will run and inside it will actually create a function all right and that function we actually have to define it here or actually have to create it here and we're gonna pass that function here so first let me create that function all right so the function is gonna be something like change name all right and let this be an error function equals to right this function will actually change this name here to John, from John Doe to something else okay so let's do that and again since we are using changing the state we have to use what is called this dot set state all right and again if you don't know what all these are you can actually check my crash course I already have it on react and I think that would help you so this dot state and the value that I want to change is this name so you can write name colon and the value with which I want to change is let me just write uh, or now Adam Jones something like that Adam Holmes sorry about that Adam Jones something like that right so that's that so when this on click when the button is pressed and on click event runs and it'll actually run this method okay so this method you can actually pass it through here so this is basically an object right so let me just do something like this and let me create a comma and pass that function as well so let me just do change and say this dot change name name all right something like that so this dot this dot change name this refers to this app comp app class right here and dot change name refers to this method all right and we're actually passing through this property change all right so and since we have passed through this provider we can actually get that inside the consumer right so all you have to do is props dot change okay because that's where it created the property right change so yeah so let's save that and let's save that all right so basically what's happening is we have our button change name all right so when this button is going to get clicked this function will run props dot change and props dot change we are actually grabbing from where is here we are passing through here and this function will run all right so basically that's it so if you go here and click it and there you go adam jones since i clicked here i clicked the change name the state here changed and as soon as the state changed the component were also rendered all right all right guys so i think i'm gonna wrap this up in this video um now again i have not touched everything about context api okay this is just a small version just to help you understand what is a context api and how to use it okay in a very simple manner although and also i haven't i haven't shown you how to use multiple contexts and something like that i think i'll do that in later videos so for now i'm i'm, I'm actually gonna wrap things up uh if you want the code of this video then you can then i actually have a link in my description below uh you can go there and you can actually grab that from there okay so thanks for watching this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time